Um, I know some of you have traveled a long distance to be here, and we are really, really grateful that you guys chose to spend your morning with us. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm Dr. Wright's sonographer and one of his medical assistants. And I'm going to be introducing Dr. Wright. Uh, one question we get a lot at the office is what is Dr. Wright's experience with lipedema and some of his training? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Um, Dr. Wright has trained with Dr. Jeffrey Klein. Um, he is the inventor of the tumescent liposuction technique. Um, Dr. Wright's taken a few courses with him. And then he has also worked with Dr. Robert Damstra from the Northern Netherlands and Holland. Um, he's worked with Dr. Steven Raprich from Germany at the ACP conference um, two years ago and at the FDRS conference in St. Louis. Dr. Raprich pu has published multiple studies on liposuction and lipedema. Dr. Wright's also worked with Dr. Joseph Stutz from Germany four years ago at the ACP conference and two years ago again at the FDRS conference. And then he's worked with Dr. Loke Habema in the Netherlands. Um, and that one was re fairly recently in September of 2017 um, at uh, the World Liposuction Congress in Chicago. And this is, of course, in addition to all of his regular medical training. So with any further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Wright. go through um, just basic definition of lipedema, the symptoms of lipedema, how lipedema is diagnosed, stages, um, conservative treatment options, surgical treatment options, insurance, uh, research, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. That's, that's the program today. Next. So what is lipedema? So lipedema is a uh, chronic disease that ex almost exclusively occurs in women. Uh, it's characterized by bilateral, symmetric, excessive tissue um, in, the, in, in specific areas, out in the extremities, out of proportion to the rest of the body. Um, it's an inherited condition, um, and uh, it does, uh, accumulate the fat accumulates in particular patterns. Obviously, the hip, the upper and lower legs, um, uh, and uh, arms as well. Um, and so we'll we'll talk about that. About so um, Dr. Herbst's uh, most recent publication, uh, two years or four years ago, uh, showed that about eighty percent of ladies have. Um, the arms affected. In earlier studies, uh, it was about it was it was approximated twenty or thirty percent. So um, there, it's still an evolving thing of how what where what patterns and what what um, what percentage of involvement of different extremities, etc. But but that's the general all general overview. The signs and symptoms of lipedema. Um, so, it, the, the typically uh, the the pattern uh, manifests at puberty. Um, often, the, the asymmetry, in retrospect, can be seen traced back to puberty. Um, though, it may not present with symptoms or really. Um, declare itself until later in life. In fact, the, the typical patient um, is, doesn't really become very aware of it until their 30s and may not be diagnosed until uh, around menopause. Um, um, 
hopefully as greater awareness occurs, will the diagnosis and, and the recognition both both by physicians and nurses and the patients themselves will, will be earlier. Um, it is a, um, so it is a, the two body syndrome where the trunk is relatively um, smaller than the extremities. Um, and uh, as we, we mentioned earlier, it's symmetrical. The symptoms um, are hypersensitivity to touch, uh, pain, and f pain and fatigue while walking and sitting, easy bruisability, um, and um, <clears throat> then it has the, uh, it also is associated with some, some orthopedic or, or uh, mechanical uh, things such as a knock knee and impaired gait. Uh, there's also um, a characteristic distribution of an ankle cuff, a loss of skin elasticity, um, and an edema. Um, now, hypermobility is not necessarily part of the diagnosis, but it's but but hypermobility is seen um, with increased uh, prevalence for those who have lipedema. And there's there's various through the various stages the skin is affected. Um, so, so here I'm just this is just a um, an example of some of the. Um, things I was talking about, a relatively small waist with um, hypertrophy and, um, in, in the uh, thighs and calves, and here you have see the ankle cuff. Um, this, um, this, is, this is a classic example of a, um, a, a fat pad over the, um, over the um, lateral thigh and yet and you, you can see this patient is actually anorectic and so it still has that hypertrophy of a fat in their legs um, and even even all the way down to the ankles and um, and then in the more advanced cases uh, lob, lobules of fat in the uh, in the knock need orthopedic uh, derangement um, with still a relatively small waist um, so these are the uh, these are also you know of the different stages. So we'll we'll get in more into that. Um. So the 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 pathophysiology is not clearly known. Um, we uh, there are um, so lymphatics and fat. Um, are intimately connected. So lymphatic tissue only occurs um, or develops near uh, fat cells, especially in, in the fat cells near uh, lymphatics are different than other fat cells. Um, they are less resistant to um, diet or calorie restriction. Um, so there is something going on with um, uh, lymphatics, uh, increased lymphatic flow with uh, eventual overwhelming of the lymphatics and then leading to progressive fat growth. That's, that is our thinking now. Um, so. so how is lipedema diagnosed? Um, well, the most important part of the diagnosis is a, is a clinical exam. And, and, and it goes over the, the characteristic, um, the characteristics I, I I went through there uh, with the uh, you know the characteristic distributions of the fat, the uh, the clinical symptoms, the um, the um, are all the the, the the family history, et cetera. All all are are important for the diagnosis, but. Also, in just as important is rule out competing diagnosis because you can actually get a flebo lymphedema or veno lymphedema that looks exactly like lipedema. It can be symmetric, it can spare the feet, it can have swelling, and, and any in all our lymphedema 
disease, disorders, uh, there is also a fat hypertrophy. So um, it, it, it really is, um, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you, it, it can be very hard to tease out those different things. And so it's really critical that we rule out um, uh, venous pathology and other, as well as other lymphedema um, disorders when we diagnose that. So um, we, that, so the, the diagnosis must include a, a careful venous Doppler looking for um, signs of venous um, insufficiency. Is a, on there is the example of, of um, <clears throat> how we detect venous insufficiency on a, on a uh, vas venous Doppler exam, um, as well as rule out other types of of lymphedema disorders. Um, um, so that's uh, that's 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 a brief summary of the diagnosis. Okay, so this there's so Dr. Herbst and I really believe there's three stages because we believe that the lymphedema or swelling part of it is in all um, all the stages. It is maybe more overtly manifested in the more advanced stages, but there's, and this goes back to the original uh, description of it, it always involves swell, swelling in the fat. And what, what people um, are often attributing to the, and, and, and where I think the confusion is, is that, that it doesn't go on to swell in the hands and feet until it, you're getting actually a secondary lymphedema. Um, um, but, but always there is, there's always um, um, some swelling in the fat tissue, uh, even in stage one. And then in stage, and, and, this, and, and at that stage, the, um, the fat is, is smooth and, um, and just more, uh, and, and its, text, its texture is smooth, but it also feels swollen, even, even at stage one. And on the ultrasound, we can see, even in the early stages, we can see some edema in the, uh, in the, in the fatty tissue, and we can see some disruption of the uh, fibrous tissue. Even before you can feel this, you can see these early signs, and, and that is, um, um, uh, sort of critical to our understanding also of the pathogenesis or the, the cause of, of, of lipedema. On stage two, um, we see um, uh, you feel nodularity, in, and this is described as, you know, like buckshot or pebbles or that sort of thing, and, 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 and uh, or, or, or more, more, more uh, poetically, pearls in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's why, I mean, I think that that's just so, this is, in, in, for those who, you know, are around me, I, 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 I love to use poetic terms because this is, um, so I call this just lusciousness. And, and, here, is where, and here is where we have, and here we have pearls, and um, and then then stage three, um, there are lobules that develop, and um, and and this is where uh, these lobules are sort of islands um, of fat that are um, in the in the skin that are that are separated by fibrous bands, and um, and they are uh, they complicate the treatment of this because once the lobules. Um, are there? It makes it much harder to get into compression, and much harder to um, um, they they make clothing and everything. They're just they're a nightmare. So um, so here are the types of lipidemic disease. Can you guys see this well? Um, let me try. That didn't help, did it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we're just gonna we're gonna go back and I'm, so what this is trying to show uh, in type one is really the buttocks. Um, 
um, and then our hips uh, is the area. Type two is the hips and thighs. Type three is from uh, the ankles all the way up to the buttocks. Um, type four uh, <clears throat> is in the arms. Um, and, um, and then type five, which is the rarest type, is where it just affects the calves. Type is full body. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, and, and, and that's a good point because while you guys, is that going to advance for you? Okay. Well, I, I do want to say that. I mean, you know, so while, and that comes up, and I, I, I do want to just mention because that's a good point, uh, is that it really does, even though we're describing it where in these types affecting the extremities, it does, it does. The fact does really, we, that's not in part of the classification because when it does affect the trunk, we are, um, you know, then we don't want to, we don't want to make a big deal out of that because then people will confuse it with a, a obesity. And um, so <clears throat> the conservative treatment um, includes compressions, wraps, Complete decongestive therapy, PTO. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's There's a question right here. Yeah. Quick question. When it comes to the lobules, when you're talking more of that lipedema diagnosis, do they tend to stay more watery and pliable, or do they become fibrotic as well, like true lymphedema? Well, so they start, they, they do so seem they, to. They can't progress. They do tend to um, hold the swelling, and, and but eventually they do fibro become fibrotic. Just, they go through that 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 <coughs> process. Thank you. Um, so it includes uh, intermittent compression pumps, uh, supplements, diosamine, which is a vino and and, and lymphotonic, um, selenium, which helps with fat metabolism, vitamin D. Um, diet is very important. Um, and let me explain about diet a little bit because this uh, fat is uh, highly sensitive to um, insulin and carbohydrates so while it is relatively resistant to um, to weight loss and calorie restriction if it the opposite is not true if if there is if it's if there's weight gain and a lot of a lot of carbohydrates and in, 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 in high insulin state it can hypertrophy and go grow out of control um, so, so, <clears throat> so it is um, it is um, sensitive to diet, but it only goes one way. <laughs> uh, exercise, water therapy, and walking uh, are, are are two of the best exercises for this. Um, so we emphasize low impact and and, and um, aerobic exercise. Okay, next, please. So lymph sparing liposuction is, is different than cosmetic liposuction because it, the idea is to remove the sick fat. And uh, we, it's, it's critical that, they, that decompression occur before uh, surgery. Um, and the majority of people experience significant improvement in their clinical symptoms, uh, pain, edema, bruising, and improved quality of life after lymph sparing liposuction and um, and they have reduced need for conservative treatments but it does not cure 